Hello everyone, welcome to Anime No Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. In today's video, now that we have full access to chapter 1046, we're gonna take a little bit of time to talk about the events that will be taking place in the chapter, as in the fight between Luffy and Kaido, and also how Raizo might be able to stop the flame spreading further on Onigashima. The events we'll be discussing are not coming from the official translation, so of course some phrases may be confusing or might not make sense for the context. So we'll talk about this until the official chapter comes out, until we have better information. Before we we dive into the video, if you're new to the channel, we'd be honored if you'd consider leaving us a like or even subscribing with a comment letting us know what you thought of the video. It really helps us out and motivates us to make more content. And if you'd like to help out the channel in a better way, consider sharing the video with a friend. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So chapter 1046 opens with Kaido and Luffy fighting. And Luffy is wondering what he had just done, so he gets ready to name his attack Gomo Gomo no fill in the blank. But as he's about to complete his sentence, Kaido interrupts him. Then Kaido says that he has a question for Luffy, and he wants to know who is he. But Luffy doesn't quite understand why or what the question means. And then we see Zunisha saying that the rhythm of liberation is leading him to Joy Boy. Zunisha goes on to say that he had been feeling that Joy Boy was close to him, so he couldn't help feeling that this was all happening because of fate, and that he would keep his faith in Joy Boy. We see the scene then shift back to Luffy and Kaido, where Straw Hat tells the leader of the Beast Pirates, Kaido, that because he's asking who he is, that he was Monkey D. Luffy, the one who will overcome the Yonko and become king of the pirates. And Kaido, with a big smile, says that he is happy Luffy is still as arrogant as ever. When his mind and body reach their maximum capacity, then that is what awakening means. As Kaido continues, he notes that Luffy's power is ridiculous, and goes on to even say that Luffy seemed to have lost much of what he had accumulated up to this point in the journey, and many of the things he now possessed had all been ruined. He also goes on to tell Luffy that the same thing has happened to him. So Luffy responds and says that he knows there are things that he needs to sacrifice at all costs to achieve his goals. And then he goes to attack Kaido. Luffy attacks him, but Kaido manages to counterattack, so they both stop. Luffy starts coughing then because of the strong smoke that he had inhaled, and Kaido says that the smoke came from below. The flames had surrounded all the floors of the castle, and many people who were down there were about to lose their lives due to the flames. But our pirate with the straw hat is not shaken, and Luffy says that he trusts those people because they will be taking care of whatever's going on inside. And the only job Luffy has at that moment is to defeat Kaido. Kaido then uses an attack called Demolition Blast, but Luffy Luffy stretches his legs so that the attack passes right underneath him and never makes a contact. And we then see the whole castle on fire. Next, the manga takes us inside the castle where we see Nami and Chopper talking. And Chopper asks if Nami was okay, but then he also asks her what to do about the fire. With a desperate look on his face, Chopper says that Zoro, Sanji, Frankie, Usopp, Robin, Brooke, and Jimbe were not there, and that there was no one there to help him. And this might mean that they could have lost their lives to the flames. But Nami says that this just can't be true, and that there's no way they could analyze this situation, because with all the flames around them, it would be impossible, and several events were also getting in their way. At this point, there would be no way for the two of them to look for their companions, and even if they were safe, Onigashima is covered in flames, and there was nowhere safe unless the whole island was brought down. So Chopper asked Zeus to take his power and make it rain so that they could put out the fire around. Them. But Zeus ends up saying that the flames are way too high, and with the heat there, it would actually end up burning our cloud friend. We see another scene where Onigashima's underground is being totally destroyed, and the allies of the Straw Hats have no way to escape, as the flames have caused the beams that were supporting upper parts of the castle to fall over the exits. We see the scene change again, where we see the second floor, and Beppo is being carried by his companions because he can no longer run, and says that the heat is so bad he can no longer stand it. Meanwhile, Beppo's companions tell him to stop saying these things, and to help them. While one of the companions is there saying that they won't be able to make it out alive, the other calls out for help from their Captain Law. In our next scene, we look underground and see that Robin and Brooke are next to allied Samurai, and they feel sorry for Brooke, but he says that everything's fine with him because his body had not been hit. Brooke next asks Robin if there was any way for them to escape alive from that place, but Robin, as usual, kind of comes across in a very pessimistic way, saying that there might be no way to escape safely. On the following page, we see Sanji, together with some of the other people trying to escape from the palace, see the ground fall right in front of them. And then Sanji says it just won't even work, that even if they managed to escape the castle, there'd be no ground for them to stand on. We next see a panel of Apu talking to a number who is trying to destroy the wall to escape, but he doesn't manage to be able to break through. So Apu tells him to try again, because the wall wasn't just so hot. Apu goes on to say that if they don't destroy that wall, they would both lose their lives. So he says to the number that one arm is a very cheap price to pay for survival, implying that our big friend might have to sacrifice his arm 
to destroy the wall. But the number doesn't understand, so Apu just gets angry and tells him to do something useful with that huge body. But again, the creature doesn't understand, and Apu asks him if he wants to fight. In the next series of panels, we see Usopp trying to use his green star sprinkler to put out the flames, but his water flower is immediately burned up. Now Hamlet, who's right beside him, says that this attempt was a big failure, and it was like a drop in a full bucket. Usopp responds by telling him to be quiet and that he wasn't helping. Usopp goes on to say that he had made a promise to Izo so that he would save Kin and Kiku at any cost. However, he also wanted to save himself, and angrily, Hammett replies by saying that he would like to get out alive too. We're next shown the right tower of the castle, where Frankie is with Zoro, who is still passed out. While Frankie is carrying Zoro on his back, he's saying that the castle fire should calm down, but he was also desperate to find Chopper because he needed him to look at Zoro to see what he could do to heal him. A group of pirates rushes up to Frankie, saying that they would all lose their lives before the flames could take them, but Frankie just rushes out, saying that he would not burn with them. In the next panel, we see Jinbei, who's at a pretty good distance away from Raizo on the fourth floor. Now, Raizo shouts out that he was ready and says that words could not express the gratitude he was feeling for Jinbei for trusting him. Jinbei responds by saying that the samurai are allies of his captain Luffy and that there is no reason for him to doubt Raizo. So Jinbei tells Raizo to start and Raizo says that he has put all his faith in Jinbei and says he is ready. So Raizo starts reminiscing about his past, saying that he wasn't able to save Lady Toki or Lord Ron Monosuke or Lady Hiori, that he had just failed to defend his Lord Odin on that day from Kaido's attack. Raizo begins to blame himself, and even though he possessed power, he was not able to protect anyone. But now, he never wanted to experience that feeling of loss again. And so we see a brief flashback of Raizo and Inuyarashi. In this flashback, Raizo asks Inuyarashi what rain was, and then Inuyarashi replies that it was Zunisha taking a bath, and Raizo asks if he could take some of that water. Flashing back to the present, Raizo says that he will not allow people who risk their lives to defeat Kaido and his empire lose their lives to the flame. So he uses his reign of Zo Jutsu. With this technique, Raizo releases a huge amount of water, so much that even Jinbei is impressed, and he holds this large, gigantic amount of water and starts to move it with his fishman karate techniques. Jinbei changes the direction of the water, moving it to the ground so that the water reaches all the floors below. And when we see a desperate mink saying that there is no way out, they look up to see a huge amount of water pierce through the floors, and with such force that Jinbei just lets the water spread out while Raizo prayed for everyone to be safe. And as we zoom out, we see that the entire palace of Onigashima is getting the fire put out little by little. And then our scene changes to Yamato and Momonosuke, where Yamato pulls Momonosuke by the whiskers of his dragon form and tells him to wake up. Startled, Momonosuke asks why Kaido was still alive, and Yamato replies that he had already hit his limit and that the flame clouds that he had made would not hold the island much longer and that Momonosuke would have to start creating flame clouds that were able to support Onigashima. And of course, it was going to be the only way for this island to survive if Momonosuke took over because we wanted to see Kaido defeated. So finally on the last page, we see Luffy up near the clouds holding a lightning bolt to attack Kaido. And along with him, Kaido is sitting below him with his kanabo in hand and a big smile on his face. So finally our chapter ends with Luffy about to attack Kaido and Yamato telling Momonosuke to create clouds because Omonogashima was about to fall. So there you are my friends, most of the important events in this chapter. And as we can see, there were a lot of events where we're catching up on all the various parts of what's going on in the raid, and also a huge focus on Raizo and Jinbei while they're trying to put out the fire. Next, we're going to see some of these interesting events where, of course, Yamato is following up with Momonosuke, and finally, we might get to see these flame clouds appear and Momonosuke keep Onigashima from falling on the flower capital. Also, with us learning that the flame clouds were about to disappear, I think this really gives us a read of where Kaido's at, and he really is reaching his limit. So if Momonosuke is able to rise to the challenge, Luffy and all of his allies might be able to make it out of this without losing their lives from the fall. And finally, we see this amazing scene of Luffy holding up a lightning bolt as if he was some kind of god of thunder. And as confirmed by Yamato, this confrontation may be the very end for Kaido. But meanwhile, we see Zunisha also talking about Joy Boy. So what do you think about it? Are there other takeaways that you have from this chapter? What other things do you might speculate might happen after this? Let us know in the comments below. So as we wrap up today's video, we want to thank you so much for sticking with us till the very end. Make sure you comment on any themes or ideas that you'd like to see in future videos. And since you've made it this far, give us a like as you head out to take on the rest of your day. Hope to see you all in our next video, and let's keep sailing this giant sea together. Take care.